listening to Mr. Senior Love Daddy on We Love FM. We Love W E Love FM. Why W E Love FM. W E L O V E. One O Eight FM. From the heart of Bad Stuy. W-E-L-O-V-E All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right and staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I hope that you're safe and protected and blessed. I pray that you have repented and that you have, bab- you have been baptized as well. I hope that whatever challenges that you have, that you overcome them. And I hope that your life gets better from this day on out. Now, today's message, I want to discuss about lust, um, how powerful lust is, how dangerous it could be, how damaging lust can be, and how lacking self-control and giving into temptations can ruin a lot of things. It could ruin your life. It could ruin a lot of situations. It could ruin your bonds with people and your relationships or friendships or what have you, you know. The thing about lust is that Everybody bows with this in a certain way. And we think of the word lust, we always think of it in a sensual way or a sexual matter. But really, um, people could lust for all things, all types of different things that are outside of sensuality, you know? Like people could lust for money in a wrong way. People can have that evil eye. People can lust for a position. People could yearn and itch for, you know, all types of different desires, anything that pleases the flesh. And the word tells us to live and move by the spirit. The, the word tells us to worship God in truth and truth in spirit. You can't worship the Lord in flesh. You know, the flesh is sinful by nature. And, you know, the, 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 the flesh is filthy. And a lot of times we have all types of different thoughts and intentions deep down in our minds. Our hearts tend to be on different types of intentions as well. And sometimes your soul can be troubled just by your lust. You know, uh, people have all types of different agendas and intentions when they look at something or lust for something or covet it or feel tempted to do something wrong for it, you know. When it comes to going after your lust, a lot of times um, your lust, the things that you lust for are not centered around the will of God. It's not centered around the kingdom of heaven. It's not centered around putting the most high first, you know. Most things that you lust for are for your own satisfaction, your own pleasure, you know, just self-seeking interest, you know, things that feed your ego and your narcissism. But the Old Testament and the New Testament, it tells us how to carry ourselves, how to conduct ourselves, you know, how to manage our thoughts and how to have self-control, things of that nature, you know. But lust is a huge issue that's been going on since ancient times, but it's a definitely a huge issue now because we live in a very covetous generation. We live in a jealous, competitive generation. We live in a very hypersexual society as well. So lust is at an all-time high from the old to the young, you know. That's why you keep seeing these weird, crazy news stories coming out. You keep seeing weird, bizarre stuff just happening day by day, you know. So, um, you know, the New Testament warns us about these things and what have you. So what I'm going to do is just read some scriptures that talks about lust, you know. And I just pray that we live in the spirit more often. We stop living so earthly and carnal and that we stop being so lustful, you know, because um, that really ruins your heart. It ruins your mind. It ruins your soul. All right. And the most high wants us to love him with all of his heart, mind and soul. Nothing else. All right. So just want to read these scriptures for you and just go from there. The book of Proverbs, chapter six, verse twenty five through twenty nine. Do not desire her beauty in your heart, nor let her capture you with her eyelids. For on account of a harlot, one is reduced to a loaf of bread, and an adulteress hunts for the precious life. Can a man take fire in his bosom, on his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? Or can a man walk on hot coals, and his feet not be scorched? So is the one who goes to his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her will not go unpunished. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 28. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery in her with her in his heart. 
The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate, as she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. The book of Job chapter 31 verse 1. I have made a covenant with my eyes. How then could I gaze at a virgin? The book of James chapter 1 verse 13 through 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. The book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but it's from the world. The book of Romans chapter 1, verse 21 through 27. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or gave thanks, but they became futile in their speculations. And their foolish heart was darkened, professing to be wise. They became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of a corruptible man, of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged their natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also, the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. The book of Romans chapter 7 verse 5. For while we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 through 10. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. The book of 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 3. For the time already passed is sufficient for you to have carried out the desire of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of sensuality, lust, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. The book of Second Peter chapter 2, verse 14 through 18. Having eyes full of adultery that never cease from sin, enticing unstable souls, having a heart trained in greed, accursed children, forsaken their right way, they have gone astray, having followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he received the rebuke for his own transgression. For a mute donkey, speaking with the voice of a man, restrained the madness of the prophet. These are springs without water and mist driven by a storm, for whom the black darkness has been reserved. For speaking out arrogant words of vanity, they entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets a desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, Impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, and drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality 
impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. But I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. The book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. That in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4 through 5. That each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in lustful passion, like the Gentiles who do not know God. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Now flee from youthful lust and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. The book of Titus chapter 2, verse 12, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. The book of Genesis, chapter 39, verse 6 through 12. So he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge, and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. It came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, with me here my master does not concern himself with anything in the house, and he has put all that he owns in my charge. There is no one greater than this house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? As she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the household was there inside. She caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left, with his gar he left his garment in her hand and fled and went outside. So that was done with lust, how um, the master's wife was going after Joseph, and Joseph was a fall for it, and then she, you know, falsely accused him and whatnot, you know. So, you know, false allegations, stuff like that, that's, that's been going on since ancient times, since biblical times, since, since that old time, so... Nothing new under the sun, all right? The book of Second Samuel, chapter 11, verse 2 through 5. Now when evening came, David arose from his bed and walked around on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful in appearance. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her, and when she came to him, he lay with her, and when she had purified herself from her uncleanness, she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David and said, I am pregnant. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9-10 through 10. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evil, and some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Hmm. Powerful scripture right there. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3. Not addicted to wine or pagnosis, but gentle, peaceable, free from the love of money. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 23, verse 1 through 21. The word of the Lord came to me again, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they played the harlot in Egypt. They played the harlot in their youth. There their breasts were pressed, and there their virgin bosom was handled. Their names were Ohala, the elder, and oh Ohaliba, her sister. And they became mine. And they bore sons and daughters. And as for their names, Samaria is Oloha, and Jerusalem is Alo Aholiba. 
Ahola played the harlot while she was mine, and she lusted after her lovers. After the Assyrians, her neighbors, who were clothed in purple, governors and officials, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses, she bestowed her harlotries on them, all of whom were the choicest men of Assyria. And with all whom she lusted after, with all their idols, she defiled herself. She did not forsake her holidays from the same from the time in Egypt, for in her youth, for in her youth, men had lain with her, and they handled her virgin blossom and poured out their lust on her. Therefore, I gave her into the hands of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, after whom she lusted. They uncovered her nakedness; they took her sons and her daughters, but they slew her with the sword. Thus she became a byword among women. And they executed judgments on, executed judgments on her. Now her sister Oholiba saw this, yet she was more corrupt in her lust than she, and her harlotries were more, were more than the harlotries of her sister. She lusted after the Assyrians, governors and officials, the ones near magnificently dressed, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. I saw that she had defiled herself. They both took the same way, so she increased her harlotries. And she saw men portrayed on the wall, images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, girded with the belts on their loins, with flowing turbans on their heads, all of them looking like officers, like the Babylonians in Chaldea, in Chaldea, the land of their birth. When she saw them, she lusted after them and sent messages to them in Chaldea. The Babylonians came to her to the bed of her love and defiled her with their idolatry. And when she had been defiled by them, she became, disgust she became disgusted with them. She uncovered her harlotries and uncovered her nakedness. Then I became disgusted with her as I had become disgust disgusted with her sister. Yet she multiplied her harlotries, remembering the days of her youth. When she played the harlot in the land of Egypt, she lusted after their paramours, whose flesh is like the flesh of donkeys, whose tissue, whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus you longed for the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians handled your bosom because of the breasts of their youth. All right, now let's see. Let's make sure that we abstain from lust, okay? The book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the Lord, for the flesh in regard to its lust. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshy lust, which wage war against the soul. You have to crucify your lust. The book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The book of Jude chapter 1, verse 7 through 16. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they are in the same way as these indulged in gross immor immorality and went after strange flesh, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Yet in the same way, these men also by dreaming defile the flesh and reject authority and revile angelic majesties. But Michael the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these men revile the things which they do not understand, and the things which they know by instinct, like unreasoning animals, by these things they are destroyed. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the era of Balaam, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are the men who are hidden reefs in your love feasts when they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves, clouds without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees without fruit, doubt doubly dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up their own shame like foam. Wandering stars for whom the black darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these men that Enoch in the seventh generation of, from Adam prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, which they have done in an ungodly way. 
and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken of, spoken against him. These are grumblers, finding fault, following their after their own lust. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. The book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. All right, let's see. The book of James chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your pleasures. The book of Proverbs chapter 27 verse 20. Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied, nor are the eyes of men ever satisfied. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 25. Do not desire her beauty in your heart, nor let her capture you with her eyelids. The book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 29. If your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. All right, so let's see. That's where you have the people. Those are the scriptures. When it comes to lust and lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, you know, sexual sins, temptation, lust, you know, covetousness, you know. We got to be very careful with seduction, pride, you know, evil eyes, bad thoughts, masturbation, porn, lust, you know, wrong intentions. Lust is a very dangerous thing that many people battle with on a daily, okay? So let us live in the spirit and move in the spirit and truth, all right? Let's not get too caught up with our own flesh, all right? So let's purify, our, let's clean our minds, our hearts, and souls better, okay? All right, so there you have it, people. What I would love to do is give all glory to the Most High of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and praise the only begotten Son who died for our sins. Now we're just going to close out, just give him all the praise. Let us be more careful with our decisions, our mind, our heart, our soul. Let's be more careful with our lust or whatnot. You know, let's have better self-control. Let's have more willpower. Let's have more discipline and structure, okay? So here we go as we close out. Here we go. He is the Adam, the Advocate, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The Apostle of our profession, the Arm of the Lord, the Atonement Sacrifice for our sins, the Author and Finisher of our faith, the Author and Perfecter of our faith, the Author of life, the Author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the Beloved Son, the Blessed Only Potent, the Blessed Only Ruler, the Branch, the Bread of God, the Bread of Life, the Bridegroom, the Capstone, the Captain of Salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith and true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the firstborn from the dead, firstborn over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, king of Israel, king of kings and Lord of lords, king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God the Lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the light of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord. The Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Ahayah, Shia, Muhammad, Shiach, Yahweh, Shai, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory. Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, 
the only begotten Son of God, our great God and Savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the Prince of Kings, the Prince of Life, the Prince of Peace, the Prophet, the Redeemer, the Resurrection and Life, the Revelation, the Righteous Branch, the Righteous One, the Rock, the Root of David, the Rose of Sharon, the Rule of God's Creation, the Ruler of the Kings of the Earth, the Savior, the Seed of Woman, the Shepherd and Bishop of Souls, the Shiloh, the Son of David, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Son of the Blessed, Son of the Most High God, the Source of Eternal Salvation for all who obey Him, the Son of Righteousness, the Just One, the One Mediator, the Stone the Builders Rejected, the True Bread, the True God, the True Light, the True Vine, the Truth, the Way, the Way, the Truth, and Life, the Wisdom of God, the Witness, the Wonderful Counselor, the Word, the Word of God, the Word of Life, the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In the, in the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ, we touch and agree. Amen. Yes, yes, we serve an awesome creator. And we serve an awesome son as well who died for our sins. Hallelujah. So there you have it, people. Let's be more careful with our lusts and our temptations. Let's have better self-control. Let's have better willpower. Let's make better choices. All right, let's move in the spirit, not in the flesh from here on out, okay? Because the flesh will always ruin you and put you in bad choice, put you in bad uh, situations. But the spirit will always lead us closer to the most high, all right? It'll draw us into the kingdom better. And uh, the Most High wants us to move in the spirit, not by the flesh, all right? So there you have it, people. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you get baptized, you start your life over for the Most High. I pray that you have repented. I pray that you have better willpower and self-control. I pray that you have more discipline and that you're more firm and strong and courageous as well. I pray that the days get better for you and that the Most High gives you more opportunities along your way. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.